All right, everybody. Hail and welcome to tonight's episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Uh, if this is your first time, you don't know who I am. My name is Jesse, and I'm the host here on this channel every week. Um, video content that I upload is usually related to Norse heathenry, uh, things pertaining to that sort of thing, anything that happens to attract my attention at the time or subject matter that I want to cover. Uh, we also have a series types of uploads on the channel. Down in the playlist section, you'll see Deity Discussion Series, Draghi's Corner, which is a storytelling type of uh, series that I have here. A bunch of different stuff, uh, Hobo Mall discussions, everything there for your convenience. Please check out the videos that you see there. Um, give them a like if you like them. Give them a thumbs down if you don't. Give me some feedback in the comments. And if you like what you see and what you hear, please subscribe to the channel. And then once you do that, make sure bell notifications are enabled. Um, stick around toward the uh, for the end of the video after the discussion as well because I'm going to be talking about a recent giveaway item that I've uh, just finished. Um, but getting into today's discussion is going to be kind of the differences that I see or that I notice um, and similarities between what people call also true or the, the practice of, you know, worshipping the old Norse Germanic gods and the term heathenry, um, which kind of is just sort of a blanketed umbrella term to be somewhat described the same. Um, but I, I noticed some differences and, and of course similarities. So we're going to be talking about that today. And before we get started, I will go ahead and light this candle, uh, which is tradition here on the channel. Always light the candle. Try to anyway, and some incense. So once we get these things going, we will go ahead and get into the discussion. All right. So. Why define, or why have a separation, or why, or why look differently at heathenry and also true, also true, also true. Different, uh, different people will pronounce it different ways depending on the regions that they're from, so on and so forth. So that's just linguistics for you. Um, but you know, so a lot of people will will say, okay, well, I'm I'm, an, I'm a Norse heathen, um, I'm a Norse pagan, I am also true, also tror. Um, is there really a difference there? Most people would say that there's not, that also true is in fact Norse heathenry. Um, it's just kind of the term or the, of the, the, the phrase that, get, that gets used to define that specific thing. Um, but the phrase in and of itself, of course, is very, very, it's very, very modern. Um, even though that the words also true uh, or also through as a true, whichever again, where what part of the world you're from, how you pronounce it, it all means this, that it is the, the 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 belief in or the faith of or the faith in uh, the Aesir or the, the 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 gods and goddesses. So it literally truly means that. Um, but I see it as being something that, um, in in addition to being just a very modern term for heathenry, um, as being something that has a bit more of a neo-pagan uh, or even Wiccan uh, sort of backing to it um, in its in its approach to how the gods are worshipped or how ritual is performed, things of that nature. Um, so, like I said again, you know, the the term also true is very modern, and, and I believe it, it it came back into um, uh, re-recognition as, as, as a religion back in the early seventies. Um, it, it, the, the, the worship of the old Germanic gods kind of died out in around the 1200s um, during the conversion period um, to Christianity so and then it kind of was on the back burner or it kind of went out of existence and then again back here in the late 1800s or early 1900s it was getting its momentum back and then around 1973 I think it was in Iceland is when it really kind of reintroduced itself um, but so outside of Iceland, because I see what the the uh, also true out there in Iceland are doing, they seem to have a very good grasp on a, a, a very historical, very authentic approach to the practice um, of worshiping the gods. But abroad, and, and especially in northern in the United States where I am, um, it seems that it's um, it, like I said before, it has a, a much more neo pagany sort of Wiccan um, uh, model behind it. Um, there, there's a lot of people who, when they come to this path as new heathens, as new pagans, and they're and they're interested in the Norse gods and the Germanic pantheons of, of gods, 
um, and they're interested in this and they go online and they're like, okay, what are, you know, how do I be also true? And they're searching for also true holidays and things of that nature. A lot of what's going to come up right off of the bat is um, things like, you know, the wheel of the year, which is very Wiccan, um, and, and, and some of the holidays that are marked as also true holidays being eight, I think it is. If you look at like the wheel of the year for also true holidays, you can Wikipedia it or Google it. Uh, it'll come up with like eight different events or eight different holidays um, to, to be observed. And then historically speaking, that's just not accurate. You know, the the arch heathens from where we get this this folkway from didn't follow a calendar based on solstices or equinoxes. They were lunar based, you know, so they didn't have as many of the things that we see on the Wiccan calendar wheel of the year. Um, and quite honestly, a lot of those holidays that you'll see on the Asatru, um calendar or Asatru holidays are in fact, you know, ne neo-pagan or Wiccan holidays that have just gotten kind of lumped into this Norse belief. Easter or Ostara being one of them. Um, that'll be a different discussion for a different day. Um, <clears throat> but I believe that, from what I've seen anyway, from, from a lot of the, the modern approach, and at least in, like I said, the United States where I am, you know, also true, tends to lean more towards a universalist model um, of heathenry, which is a very all-inclusive thing. It's, it's kind of this, and that's perfectly fine. I, I have nothing against universalists by any means whatsoever. I feel that heathenry is an all-inclusive thing and that we should um, not restrict the practitioners off based off of anything when it comes to race, religion, creed, you know, race, creeds, uh, sexual preferences, anything like that. None of those things should be a part of why you can't be heathen or why you aren't allowed to practice also true or anything like that. Um, but when I say that it leans more towards the universalist uh, model, um, it is very open and accepting and that they have a bit more of a, they don't have as much of the structure um, that you would see in like a tribal heathen model or even a folkish heathen uh, model where which is very structured based off of the importance of tribe and the importance of you know uh, your folk in the community um, your kindreds and that that sort of thing which is where I see um, the, the very root the very backbone of heathenry is at the tribal level um, so it kind of into you know I think to I personally look at it as kind of a bit more churchy if you will uh, if, that's, if that's the right word to use you know, they, they'll, they'll have larger organizations that kind of uh, assert themselves as being a leading authority over everybody, um, and then the, the, the people a part of that organization. Um, it just has a very, it has a much more churchy feel to it, and that may be a bad description on my part, but that's just how I see it. Um, and then uh, within the Austro model, or uh, within the Austro name, you, you even have other subcategories or subnames that, that fall off of that tree, if you will. You've got people who want to lean more towards the um, adoration or veneration of the Vanir gods, the Vanir tribes of the gods, and they will call themselves Vanatru. Um, you'll even have some who will take, take an approach um, to venerate and work with Loki and his offspring like Hel and Fenrir, Jormungandr, uh, Angerboda, and, and some of the other more malicious types uh, uh, in the mythology, and they are called Roka True. So again, you have all these various things. I think a lot of people will even, uh, people that watch this video that, that know about heathenry and that see the, the name also true and all that, you'll even hear the term Wicca True um, being tossed around. So, you know, a Wiccan uh, approach to things, which like I said, the whole Wicca True, also true thing to me, um, I see is a bit redundant because Wicca, uh, also true to me is, is Wicca using a Norse veneer. Um, you know, so there's a lot of Wiccan similarities, um, or a lot of similarities with the Wiccan practices of the neo-pagan practices that you just use the Norse veneer uh, to, to define also true. So that's kind of my thing with also true. Now, heathenry, uh, again, it's, it's just kind of like a broad term to describe the tribal folk way that, uh, or belief system, whatever you want to call it, um, from the Germanic branches of Indo, uh, you know, European families. You know, so it's very, very ancient. It, it goes way, 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 way back further than whenever also true was, was mentioned. And, you know, it, it, it has its roots in, in those parts of the world. Of course, now also true would fall into that uh, category um, as is pretty much anything else outside of, of, of Christianity. You know, if you're talking about a heathen and 
heathenry, um, anything that falls outside of the you know uh, Christian uh, model of, of, of a belief system would be considered to them as being your heathen, your pagan. Um, so it's kind of a term to describe something outside of that uh, model, and is like I said, an umbrella term. Um, <clears throat> But from what I've seen in my growth and in my, um, you know, approach and, and how I've been walking this path in this journey, you know, heathenry focuses more, um, uh, or of course it focuses on the whole, you know, worshiping the gods and goddesses, and, um, but it has a much more, it leans much more towards history, uh, getting historical backing and historical accuracies um, to sort of attempt to reconstruct the beliefs of our ancestors, um, and I use reconstruct as a, as a term, you know, sometimes you will hear the terms, uh, I'll even use the term sometimes, um, recons, uh, heathens who are, are hardcore recons or recons in, in heathen aspect. Um, sometimes that term is used sort of in a derogatory way, or not necessarily the derogatory, but it's like, Oh, uh, you better watch out for those hardcore recons, because if you have any sort of UPG, which is unverified personal gnosis, um, anything that does not back that does not have historical backing, the recons um, of the heathen community will like it's like chum in the waters. You know, you say something that's an opinion, and then the sharks come and they'll just eat you up because it doesn't have historical backing. So, not all heathens are hardcore recons, but I I see at least from my view of things that you know more and more heathens that are, that are focused on heathenry, not so much also true in the in this, the, the word sense are very much interested in learning the lore, le reading the sagas, getting as much historical information that they can about how things were done during this time when the gods were, were worshipped and venerated by our ancestors and what those traditions were. Um, and that's another thing that I feel like heathenry is very strong in is in, is in traditions, not just you know um, traditions of your tribe, but family traditions and things that um, you know build and continue to build the, your families and your tribes that come out from, you know, within that inner connection, that inner inner in guard, as you will. So there's obviously a lot of similarities with whether you know, and and some people may be watching this and, and uh, well, you're nitpicking at this, Jesse. This you know, it's also true as heathenry, and heathenry is also true as yeah, in some ways. I mean, I see that um, not all no, you know, obviously, if you want to use the term also true, you're going to be a pagan that follows the Norse traditions, right, or Nordic traditions, um, but that just because you're also true and you're heathen doesn't mean that heathen that all heathens would consider themselves also true. Because again, some of the traditions, some of the things that happen under the also true model, don't fall under that historical backing things that most all other um, heathens um, that don't use that term would would want to lean more towards. So I personally will call myself heathen or Norse pagan. I don't have anything against the term also true because again it's, it's kind of one of those identifying things that people will recognize um and it's a kind of like a banner that, it, that we can all maybe rally under or whatever um but so i don't personally use the term that i am also true or i'm also true or, or however you want to call it you know um in my description of what i do i'll use it as a, as a thing like if people don't know what it is i'm like well it's you know if you ever heard of also true or you want to look something up or research it about that's what it is and fine, but in terms of how I describe what I practice and what I do, I use the term Norse pagan or or, or heathen. Um, so I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on the differences, if there are any to you and in your mind. What do you maybe call yourself uh, if you are a pagan that follows a Norse uh, Germanic Norse structure of things? Uh, what do you call yourself? Do you have it? Does it matter? Um, some of us might not even care about the term or the title because we're getting into you know labels, and that doesn't really mean a whole lot in the long run. But if you have any insight and you have anything that you'd like to offer, please drop a comment down below and let me know. Um, so before we end the video, like I mentioned earlier at the beginning, there is a giveaway item that I will be um, announcing. Well, actually, the, the, the giveaway item is done. Um, let me just show everybody because this was the, this was the item that I, make, that I made for uh, reaching 1,000 subscribers here on the YouTube channel. Um, I've kind of posted picture updates of it along the way. Um, over this last week and now it's finally done it's all stained and I'm going to show everybody that's watching on Facebook first uh, the Facebook live folks um, so it's all stained and ready to go um, 
and then the inside. Now the inside was going to have some wording on the on the top, the Heathens Helping Heathens logo. Um, but you guys watching up here on, you know, YouTube, you can kind of see here it is. Let me get the lighting a little bit better for you. Um, but it is a box. It's all stained and whatnot on the inside and um, kind of around the bottom. I'm not sure if you can see with the lighting, but around the bottom, I'll post a picture of it. Is all the Elder Food Art rooms. Um, I was going to have Heathens Helping Heathens burned into the top of it, but quite honestly, I'm not very skilled enough to get in there with a the stencil and make sure that it's all straight and crooked. I didn't want it looking, or straight, I, not crooked, I didn't want it to end up being all sideways and askew and, and not looking good. So this is the best that I could do with it. You got the Midgard Musings binding on the top. This item, like I said, is going to be a giveaway item. I will be announcing the rules of the giveaway in a post on the YouTube channel tomorrow um, somewhere around somewhere around midday say around noon central standard time so guys that are watching on Facebook be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, because that is where the announcement for how to enter the giveaway will be revealed all right so everybody again thank you so much for watching today again please leave your comments down below with what you thought about today's video and if you haven't already right here somewhere right here over this uh, part of my shoulder here will be the floating Midgard Musings logo Click on that, become a subscriber. Once you do, make sure you click bell for notifications. I go live on Monday nights um, here on the channel. So I would definitely love to see you guys in the live chat. Maybe we have some more discussion. Um, and I will be back next week uh, on the channel for the next video. We will decide what that's going to be sometime this week. Anyways, thank you again so much for your support. Everyone watching on Facebook, stick around so I can answer some questions and have some dialogue. Thank you all once again. Hail.